in this video, we are talking about one of the biggest frustrations with CSS grid. You know how powerful grid is for layouts, but the moment you try to nest grids inside each other, everything starts falling apart. The child grid doesn't follow the parent stacks, which means your rows and columns never truly align. But now that's finally fixed, and the solution is completely built into CSS itself. It's called subgrid, and once you understand it, you will wonder how you ever work without it. So what exactly is subgrid? In simple words, normally when you create a nested grid inside a grid, the child grid creates its own rows and columns. That's why things stop lining up. But with subgrid, the nested grid doesn't make its own tracks. Instead, it inherits the tracks and even line names from the parent grid. That means everything inside, titles, images, buttons, will line up perfectly across your layout. Before, each grid was like an island with its own rules. But now, subgrid lets them all share the same structure. And yes, this isn't a hack. This comes straight from CSS itself as confirmed in the MDN web docs. Alright, let's see how subgrid actually works in code. Here, the parent grid is defining three columns. One flexible column, one double white column, and another flexible column. For the rows, it's saying first row auto size, second row takes all the remaining space, and the last row auto size again. Now here's the child. Instead of creating new columns and rows, the child grid just says, I will use whatever my parent already said. That means the child inherits the exact same tracks, gaps, and alignment. And the best part, you don't have to repeat the same definitions in both layers anymore. One line subgrid keeps everything perfectly consistent. You know those card layouts where some cards have longer text and suddenly everything looks messy. Headers are on one line, footers are on another and nothing lines up. With subgrid, you can finally fix this. Each card can inherit the same row tracks from the parent, so the headers, content and footers always stay aligned perfectly, no matter the text length. Another super useful case is forms. Normally, if you repeat form sections, your labels and inputs don't always align neatly. But with subgrid, the parent defines two columns, one for labels and one for inputs. And then each form section inherits that exact structure. That way, every label lines up in one column and every input lines up in the other. In this part, let's go a little deeper with subgrid. Normally, you would pick either rows or columns to inherit, but with subgrid, you can grab both at the same time. That means the child grid follows the parent's structure perfectly. Here's a quick example. In this code, the child grid is locked into the parent's rows and columns, so if the parent layout changes, the child automatically stays in sync. And here's something even cooler. If your parent grid has named lines, those names flow into the subgrid too. That means you can snap your child items to the same named lines without repeating code. Finally, you can even nest subgrids inside other subgrids. So if you are building a big dashboard or a deep article layout, everything stays aligned all the way down. Let's get real about browser support, because that's always a big question. According to Can I Use as mid of 2025, Firefox has supported subgrid since version 71, so it's been solid there for a long time. Safari, including iOS Safari, supports subgrid from version 16 onward. Chrome and Edge, built on Chromium, didn't support it until version 117, but now the latest versions fully support subgrid too. So yes, major modern browsers support subgrid now, but what about people on older browsers? Here's a clean, common fallback strategy using feature queries. What this does is, if the browser understands subgrid, we use it and get the perfect aligned layout. If not, we fall back to a normal grid layout so the content still looks okay. This lets you start using subgrid today while still keeping your site usable for everyone. If this video helped you understand subgrid in a simple way, make sure to stick around because I've got more videos coming that go even deeper into CSS tricks. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.